Hey guys, I'm on Joe's computer right now, so I know the lot. Well, I'm thinking that the picture won't be real good, but you guys know us. We're not we're not technocrats up in here. Um, want to let everybody know. Uh, for those of you that follow us closely, you know Rocky's been very sick. It's really just a follow-up video to the video that I did yesterday. Uh, but Rocky's been very sick for quite a long time, and especially in dog time. I believe it was five, six, or seven weeks that he's been very sick. And uh, I mean, just really, really sick passing blood in his stool and urine, heat up with infection. Uh, he's had, uh, there's like three forms of the Lyme disease, or it's in the family of Lyme disease, but it's one of the other two that he got, and he was really heat up real bad with parasites, uh, they said, but his poop is now tested clear of parasites. Uh, we've got to go back again. Uh, I'll go back Friday and they'll check his blood and see if he's got any parasitical, I guess, matter or parasites in his blood. Uh, we were able to uh, play fetch for Rocky. Generally, your dog plays fetch with you, but Rocky don't do it that way. We throw the ball, Rocky will get the ball, and then we have to chase Rocky down because he won't give the ball up. So that's his form of fetch, which really does good for me because it helps me to move around more. And you guys know I'm not in the best shape at all and have had a lot of health stuff going on. But praise the good Lord, Joe's, uh, Rocky's doing a lot better today. Oh my gosh, he's eating like a, a horse. And uh, I literally, he wasn't really eating hardly anything at all. And when he would eat, I'd have to hand each piece of food to him and feed him hand to mouth that way. Well, he's gobbling everything up in sight that we put in front of him now uh, and getting a lot better. He's crying, uh, which he does when he wants something. Uh, you get the hoo, 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 and he does that. And boy, he's a genius at that, and especially at playing my wife uh, to get every little thing in the world he wants when he wants it. Uh, so we're, we're, it's just getting back to normal. Thank God for all of that. And then I, I want to say again, so this is really a follow-up video. Um, I want to thank, I'm going to go ahead and give the channel out and I hope that's okay. Uh, the Weekend Warrior, I'll leave a link down to it in the bottom at the description or in the pinned comments. Uh, they, they went through some struggles. They have a German Shepherd that just passed and we got boxing and dogs in common there. And the other day, again, for those that may not have seen the video, uh, I'll call him the warrior here because he doesn't really use his name online, uh, at least not in the boxing round. And so I'll say the warrior. And the warrior reached out for Joe and just out of the blue was like, I'd like to get Joe a good pair of boxing shoes. 
and just sent a link and said, look, the guys in the gym are wearing these now. This seems to be the new thing. And, you know, everybody's talking about how comfortable these are. And uh, they, they were not the cheapest pair of, of shoes in the world either. And, uh, you know, we just can be no more grateful. And it's very hard for us to get things here uh, where we're at in South America, here in Colombia. And uh, not only did he do that, he was like, uh, tell Jody, get kind of a list of the things that, you know, he might would want. And I believe I told him one other thing. Uh, you know, I had to have a groin protector uh, handmade for Joe. And that thing really, it wasn't all that, but it worked. But Joe's outgrown it. And uh, he got that. And, and then just went above and beyond that. And everything that he got, Joe, Joe really needs. It's going to be a great convenience for Joe. A great convenience. Uh, it's, you know, it's not like in the U.S. where we can just uh, go and, uh, e even with the shoes, I, if you guys have been following the channel for a while, you may remember that uh, the Christmas before last Christmas, I was able to get Joe a pair of boxing shoes. And there again, they had to hand make those and uh, they didn't work <laughs> any well at all. And uh, he outgrew them very quickly. Uh, but it was, it was just not workable for him. And, uh, you know, I don't want to say cheap because any, really I think anything that somebody's making with their hands is something good. But uh, we, to get quality with the, uh, is just, a, you know, even to get a name brand of anything uh, I was able to, uh, we went into a department store, I believe it was about six months ago. It was right before, shortly before Christmas, maybe it's about, I don't, four months ago. Uh, and they had some shirts and they were actually, uh, what, we, what in the U.S. would be a very cheap shirt, but little Everlast shirts and uh, the, we got that for him as an early Christmas present. We were able to give it, get him two Everlast shirts. So, so, I mean, just the littlest things that we would take for granted uh, in the United States is a big, big thing here where we're at. So, uh, you know, it was like <laughs> he was guided by God with what he got for Joe and uh, we just can't there's no words to use to express our gratefulness alright I want to go on because there's something else I want to say well first Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Warden. And we hope everybody that really loves us, uh, and we've got so many people that love us to pieces. We're not, we're not sitting here getting four or five million views, but 30, 40, or 50 views we get on our videos are 30 or 40 or 50 people that love us to pieces and we love them to pieces and we know who they are and they know who we are 
So there is a new thing happening in the world, which is you could say would be an internet family. You can have a family of very good friends online. And that's one of the positives about the internet. And gosh, we got the best. So we're asking our friends to go over there and uh, subscribe to Weekend War the Weekend Warrior. Uh, a lot of my friends already have, but we're asking others go up there and subscribe to him. He is a great guy. Uh, he has started boxing at 40, and uh, what this guy's done at his age is shockingly remarkable shockingly remarkable and you guys should check him out and he's an inspiration to even guys as old as I am and I'm old enough to be his dad dad really but it, it's inspiring to me you know so g please go up there and uh, subscribe to him and check him out he's got a lot of stuff and we've even learned some stuff over there and you know I've been in and out of boxing since the mid 70s early 70s so and I've learned stuff uh, the next thing I want to talk about this is going to be another long video as most of our videos are my videos are is uh, something I talked about about a year and three or four months ago, I believe. Y'all know I've been knocked in the head one too many times. My memory ain't the best in the world. Uh, but I want to talk about the relationships that we have with our dogs and cats and other types of pets. And it's important for everybody, everybody, to really, if you're older, you need to be remembering what you were like and how childlike you were as a child. It's very important to do uh, with your pets with your little doggies or your cats or hamsters or whatever you may have had uh, and the love that you had. Uh, we start getting older. <laughs> uh, things change. And I especially want to tell all the kids out there something. You know, we got a lot of people 13, 14, 17 years old, 18, 19, and, and some younger men on here. And I want to tell you all something. And I want to tell, remind us older folks of it, of it also. Uh, when I was a young man, if you walked into a church or talked to a pastor or just talk to someone on the street that had biblical knowledge, good-hearted, and some wisdom about themselves. Uh, back then, as opposed to today, it's just night and day, night and day. I, I don't know where most of this mess is coming from today. Uh, a lot of things get said, a lot of crazy stuff. And you, you gotta really think in your head. <coughs> you gotta think nowadays. Uh, but when I was a young man and I was in church, in church they would tell you, all dogs go to heaven, all cats go to heaven all hamsters go to heaven and I can't right now put my hand on the verses that elude to point to and concretely affirm this but 
the life in all our animals. Uh, and it's important to note that to people that can be cruel out there, uh, animals weren't per put here for that. Uh, animals were put here for us, for our enjoyment, for good, for good things, not for bad things. And I want to tell you all that uh, all, all our pets do go to heaven. Their, li their life essence just returns to God. And we are going to be with our pets in heaven. And I'm an old man. And put the bear against your old preacher, uh, I'd, I'd probably, and if he didn't, don't believe like what I'm saying here, if I sat with your old preacher, and especially with your young one, uh, I'd have them convinced in 45 minutes because it doesn't take a lot of, lot, a, a lot to tell the truth. And we used to uh, years ago, many 50 years ago, and before that, uh, if someone's dog or cat died uh, in the church, we'd, we'd pray over that. Uh, it's not a fairy tale. It's, it's just not that, that our pets go to heaven. They do go to heaven. And uh, they're going to be there with us. And I believe I was eight or nine. And I was sitting inside the Baptist church. And that preacher got up there and he started talking about animals and whether they go to heaven and what happens. And he says, all you kids, because... Now, you know, you may be in a church where the kids just stay separated from the main sermon. We never used to do that. You'd go in, you'd have Sunday school class, it'd be split up to your age groups, and then you go in, into the main congregation and you hear the same sermon that the adults get. And uh, a lot of places don't do that no more, and I believe they should. Kids can understand more than... than a lot of folks think they can, and, when, and and a lot of things we do, kids understand what we're doing that ain't so good when we think they can't can understand. You got to be careful. And but I'll never forget that preacher said, uh, Pastor Jernigan, we call him Preacher Jernigan, and. He got up there and he said, let me tell you all something right now. Ain't nobody a coming up in this church and spreading no filth like the animals don't get to go to heaven. He said, that's foolish. And he said something monumental stayed with me uh, as an old man. He said, you have no idea how many little boys and little girls have got at the side of their bed and moved to that mountain. And they're going to be with the, their little animals that they love. They're going to be with their little kitties. They're going to be with their, with their little doggies. And only a fool would think otherwise. And I'm telling you, I've been around the block so many times it ain't even funny. And I'm convinced of that. It's factual to me. And uh, I don't believe everything's just a coincidence and floating around in the wind. I don't think that at all. Uh, I don't see how any reasonable adult could look around and think like that. So... I just want to affirm with us all, uh, I had a Rottweiler. I was uh, uh, 
alone for quite some time. When I was younger, I had this gal break my heart. I mean, just shatter me. Everybody in town thought she was, oh my God, she's the most beautiful thing in the world. And of course I did too. And I won her over. And we split and my heart was broken for over 10 years. And I didn't really get out here and date or do too much of anything for 10 years of my life. Just shattered with a broken heart. And then my wife came along and I look back on that and I say, oh my goodness, why was I thinking like that? What in the world? And I had older people around me at the time that were like, you're going to look back on this and you're going to be laughing about it. And I was like, these fools don't understand, but it was me that was foolish and didn't understand. But I had all my love wrapped up in one little girl, and she was my little Rottweiler, and I named her Zoe. And boy, I loved, I loved that dog. And uh, I had gotten on up in career status where I could do what I wanted to do. And I took her to work with me, on, not, not every day, some would say a daily basis. And everybody I worked with, every uh, place I went, uh, a lot of people didn't remember my name, but they sure remembered Zoe's name. And there was an accident. She got hit by a car right in front of me uh, really early, before light one morning. And... Uh, I still got stress syndrome problems uh, that that happened. Uh, and I've been stabbed a couple of times. I've had a few things happen. Uh, and that was really bad. And But I know that God's going to afford me the opportunity to just lay there and pet Zoe of some evenings and just drift off to sleep if there's sleep in heaven. And uh, I know these things are going to happen. I'm just 100% convinced. I know that uh, I'm just going to go on here. I feel like talking right now. A lot of people even, they they go through life and they think, that time's lost, I can never get it back. And in the Bible, it says that God will restore lost time. And those years I was alone, those years that when my dad died when I was a little boy, all restored all of that was restored I went through all my growing up years after my da daddy died uh, really messed up uh, I mean I could you know every time I did something especially when it was a real good excellent thing it just broke my heart because I didn't have him there to share it with me uh, you know but I, we all got problems and the reason why I'm saying something is that maybe it helps one of you uh, this ain't really about me it's me maybe getting through things to try to tell somebody hey you can, this will be restored for you too so I always from a very very young age After my dad died, I was a dear Lord. I mean, I'd get down into bed and I'd say, "Dear Lord, will you?" I'd say, "Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep." And uh, 
And I would pray tonight, dear Lord, please give me, a, a, let me have a little boy that's like my daddy. And voila. And uh, life is challenging. It's very challenging. Uh, and I'm really, really starting to understand what Paul said in the Bible about keeping up and going to good fight. Keep going. Uh, uh, don't, you know, give, don't give up. Keep going. Keep going with the good fight. And I'm finding as I'm getting old that things that I did keep fighting for, it was all went around in a circle and came back for, it's like a, 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 I've taken a victory lap, like in the NASCAR racing. You know, out of the despair, a great price has come. So, I don't know, I just wanted to share that with everyone. I, we've been going through a whole lot here and brightness has come, been coming our way goodness and love from others just goodness I can't say thanks enough for I, I just simply can't I don't know words and I want I want to tell folks that when every time when you do fall Joe can you get the door Every time when you do fall, that's my wife coming in from uh, school. When you do fall, you can get back up and walk. So I guess I'll leave you folks with that. I've got my wife coming in. Uh, she's working with kids too. And you see Rocky lurking in the background. He's feeling great. And we just want to send love out to everybody. Prayers out to everybody and love out to everybody. And we want to uh, tell everybody that we're hoping we wish that they have a great week. We sincerely do.